This video is part one of factoring. To begin with, we want to use a process called X factoring. And to do that, we need to look at this X here. In the top of the X, we're going to put a product. And in the bottom of this X, we're going to put a sum. And then on either side is where we're actually going to find our factors. And it works this way, that with factors, M times N would be would multiply to get this product. And M plus N would add to get the sum. So you're going to just kind of take the two numbers and do the top and the bottom and see what happens. So let's look at this one. We don't, won't normally do it this one, but I want to get you in the habit of looking at products and sums. So the product is negative 5 times 8, or 4, negative 40. And the sum is negative 5 plus 8, which would be positive 3. And the next one, negative 4 times negative 8 would be a positive 32. And if we take 4, negative 4 plus a negative 8, we get a negative 12. So now let's go the other way. We want to find that m and that n. So factors of 18 that add up to 11. Well, you could sit here and start listing your factors. 1 and 18. If I add those, that would be 19. And 2 times 9 would be 2 plus 9 would give me 11. So that must be my factors. So I have a positive 2 and a positive 9. Again, 2 times 9 is 18. 2 plus 9 is 11. Let's try with negative 12. If we start listing our factors, we could have negative 1 times 12. But that would be negative 11. We're trying to get to negative 1. So then we could try negative 2 times 6. That's also negative 12. That's a positive 6. And that would give me a positive 4. That doesn't work. We also have negative 3 times 4. And that would give me a positive 1. So I'm close here. This would give me a positive 1. If I change my signs and make that 3 and negative 4, when I add those, I will get negative 1. So I want negative 4 and positive 3. So how do we use that? Well, first, before we really start factoring, we got one more thing that we need to look at before we can actually factor. <clears throat> Just to notice a couple of things that are always true about factoring. So here we have x squared plus 9, x plus 14. And I've told you that it's x plus 2 and x plus 7. Same thing here. We've got this x squared minus 4x minus 12, and it factors to x plus 2x minus 6. And again, we have x squared plus 2x minus 3 is equal to x minus 1x plus 3. And I really should have a fourth one in here. So let me give you that one. And it would be x squared minus 5x plus 6. And that one would factor to x minus 3 and x minus 2. So if you look at the factors of the first term, if you look inside our parentheses of our binomials, the factors of x squared are actually these first terms. So the factors of the first term are the first terms of our binomial. And if you look at the last terms, 14, factors of 14, one factor is set is 2 and 7. Look here, negative 12. One factor set is 2 and negative 6. And also here, negative 3. Well, we could have negative 1 and 3. That's one way to get to negative 3. So the factors of the last term were the last terms of my polynomial or my binomials. Now, let's look at the positive last term. That would be this case here and the one that I shared with you and added on. If I have a positive last term, notice I had a positive and a positive. And I have a positive last term. In this case, I have a negative and a negative. Well, remember, to get a positive, you have to multiply two of the same sign. How are we going to know whether it's a positive or a negative? Well, look at your middle term. My middle term is positive 9, and so are my two signs in my binomials. This is a negative 5, and so are the signs, both negatives, inside my binomials. So the positive last term, the signs are the same. And let's take it one step further and say they're the same as the middle. So our last two cases then are when we have a negative last term. And remember, to get a negative, you have to multiply a negative times a positive. You have to have opposite signs. So you have to find the right combination, but they will always be opposite. 
So we're going to be factoring and look here. We're going to make sure that A is always 1 in this video because things work out nicely. So if I look at this, I want to say what C and B are. <clears throat> Actually, we should call it AC. If I did A times C, 1 times 6 would be 6. And my B is a positive 7. And this is a positive 6. All right. And here's where the X comes in. This is my A times my C, so that's my 6. And this down here is always going to be my B, that's my plus 7. So what are factors that I added together to get to 7 that are factors of 6? Well, that would be 6 and 1, both positive. Because it's a positive number, I need the same signs. So here I've given you X plus 1, so the other one must be X plus 6. Okay, again, let's look at A, C. That'll make it easier for the next video. So A is 1, and C is 6. Okay, this is my A, and this is my C, and this is my B. A times C would be, again, positive 6. And my B is this middle term, which is negative 5. So if I make an X for that one, I have positive 6 in the top, negative 5 in the bottom, and I need to find factors that will add up to negative 5. Now it's a positive first term. That means my signs have to be the same. And if I'm going to add together and get a negative number, that means both my signs had to be negative. So I have factors of 6. 1 and 6 won't do that. That would give me negative 7. But negative 3 and negative 2 will give me negative 5 when I add them. So it was must be x. It was a negative 3 and x minus 2 because it was a negative 2. All right, again, AC. Let's try a different color. AC. A is 1. C is negative 8. So we have negative 8. And our middle term is negative 7. So again, making an x here. My AC goes in the top. That's negative 8. My B goes in the bottom. That's negative 7. And so factors of negative 8 that will add up to negative 7, well, they have to be opposite signs this time since it's a negative. And I want my bigger number to be negative because I'm going to have a negative result. And so I think it's negative 8 and positive 1, which adds up to negative 7. So I have x minus here for you, so the 8 would go in this factor, and then it would be x plus 1 for our second factor. And finally, again, we're going to do A times C. So 1 times negative 12 is negative 12. B is the positive 4 in the middle. And if we make an X for that one, negative 12 and a positive 4. Remember, now we have a negative in our product, which means we have to have a negative and a positive number. And factors of negative 12 that will add up to 4 if you can't think of it right away, again, try negative 1 times 12. Nope, that doesn't do it. That's negative 11. Negative 2 times 6. Oh, that's a positive 6. Oh, and there it is right there. Four, 6 minus 2 would be positive 4. So we have negative 2 and positive 6. And so we would say x minus 2 and x plus 6. Now I want you to notice that if... I gave you the option of what you wanted to put in there. We could have written x plus 6 and x minus 2. These two things are the same. So it doesn't matter what order you put them in. You just need to make sure that one goes in each factor. So let's try one from scratch. So always look for your greatest common factor first. We haven't been doing that because we wanted to concentrate on the how to do it. But now we're looking, do we have a greatest common factor? Well, we don't this time. So there's nothing there. Okay. And my A times my C is going to be 1 times negative 10. So that's negative 10. My B is positive 3. So in my X, I'm going to rewrite it over here because that one's got words all over it. My AC goes on the top. That's negative 10. And my B goes in the bottom. That's positive 3. So factors of negative 10... What does that tell you? It tells you that you've got a negative sign and a positive sign. So we're really going to kind of subtract these numbers. That will 
give us a result of 3. Well, negative 5 times 2 would be negative 3, but negative 2 times positive 5 would give us a positive 3. So negative 2 is one of our factors, 5 is the other one. And if we fill it in here, we have x plus, so it would be the plus 5, and x minus, that would be our 2. And that would be our factorization.